Hello, everyone. I am Rod Richards, proud and pleased to serve as Minister of Unitarian Universalist San Luis Obispo. And it is my great pleasure to once again be participating in the Great Central Coast Cluster Collaboration. Greetings to all of you whenever and wherever you may be viewing this sermon. Be careful crossing the intersection. I remember the trepidation I had as a young child first crossing the street by myself, the street that crossed ours at the end of our block in my then hometown of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Mount Vernon Road. Sounds scary, doesn't it? Four lanes of traffic, and I remember wondering, would the green light and the walk sign stay lit long enough for me to cross? What if I reached the middle when the light changed? What if a driver just mistook red for green? What if I tripped on the long journey from curb to curb? Okay, I was something of a fearful child, but I remember it as an achievement getting across the street, and the glow of that achievement lasted a while, probably longer than was warranted, until eventually crossing the street became just another routine that filled my days. Preparing for this sermon led me to revisit all that happens at intersections Although these days my responses are less about fear and accomplishment and are more apt to take shape as frustration or irritation. Why is that? As a pedestrian, I am sometimes irritated by drivers of automobiles who only have eyes for other automobiles. They will be looking down the road, waiting for traffic to open so that they can pull into the intersection. <clears throat> And when the traffic does clear, they are apt to pull out without a glance toward the person, me, who is crossing the street in front of them. This irritation, however, is somewhat moderated by the realization that when I am driving an automobile, I have been known to do the same thing that frustrates me about drivers of automobiles when I am a pedestrian. I have done the sheepish smile, hand wave, mouthing sorry, to a pedestrian more than once. It just seems so much more reasonable when I am driving to be focused on other cars, but that doesn't matter. What matters is the awareness of everyone in the intersection. When I am a driver, I sometimes marvel at the obliviousness of pedestrians who are intently examining the screen of their phones or engaging in conversation with a visible companion or a person who is presumably heard through their earbuds as they walk in a carefree manner out into the road with nary a glance to one side or the other. And, and as I form the question in my mind, who does that? The answer comes to me immediately. Me. I do that. I try to look up at each intersection to be aware of my surroundings, but for me, this is a long-standing practice. Even in the time before cell phones, before Kindles and e-readers, I could be seen as a child and teenager walking the streets of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, reading an actual book. And yes, I raise my eyes at most every intersection, but if I was in the middle of a particularly fascinating paragraph, well, I am grateful for those Iowa drivers at those intersections who noticed me, even as they were shaking their heads in frustration and dismay. But what has come to me amid these reflections is that actual intersections create a wonderful opportunity for understanding interdependence. We humans collectively have agreed upon how we will behave at intersections, 
obeying the messages on the signs, responding appropriately to the lights, taking turns proceeding at a four-way stop, watching out for people crossing the street, and generally paying attention to those around us. And though we are taught defensive driving, the truth is that the way we move through the world in our cars, on our bikes, on foot, is founded on a deep trust in one another. We trust that others are part of this agreement, this covenant we have made with one another about how we will behave at intersections. And I know that there are many unfortunate and all too often tragic exceptions to this agreed upon behavior. People who intentionally flout the rules for whatever reason, just this once. People who choose to drive impaired. People who let the circumstances of their personal lives and the urgency of their schedules override the awareness of others. Those things happen too often. But when you think of the number of intersections in the world, one can only marvel at the fact that they don't happen more often. And what this tells me is that we know how to do this, right? We know how to agree upon rules, how to covenant with one another to follow those rules, how to practice awareness of those around us so that we may all be trusting of one another and trustworthy. And it is undoubtedly self-interest, maybe enlightened self-interest, to understand that yes, I can choose to run stop signs, but not only am I courting danger in the moment, I am also possibly helping to set a precedent and pattern for others. I can run this stop sign, yes, but do I want another driver to run it when I am crossing the intersection. We understand that moving through the world requires us to follow some guidelines, to maintain awareness of others, and to place our trust that others will do the same. And it's not enough to say, yes, I will obey the stop sign unless I'm really late for an appointment. It is not enough to say, I will try to be aware of my surroundings and other people unless I have had a few drinks and I just need to get home. It is not enough to say, yes, I will obey the traffic lights unless I have an emergency. We have tried to build in processes for addressing these exceptions to the rules with emergency vehicles and designated drivers and simply accepting that sometimes we will not arrive somewhere at the appointed time. But we can't rightly make excuses for behavior that puts others at risk. How we move through the intersections of life in our cars, on our bikes, on foot, in our wheelchairs, with our walkers, however we move is founded on trust and a deep understanding that all of us need all of us to pay attention, to be aware of who is around us, to be especially aware of who may be vulnerable, that child in the crosswalk, that mobility challenged person who doesn't make it across the four lane street before the light changes. And we don't make excuses for behavior that puts others at risk. What if we took that understanding of intersectional interdependence into the rest of our lives as individuals, as families, as communities, as countries, as global citizens? We all have places we want to get to. We all start out on our journeys hoping to achieve our own interests. It will feel and it will be true that we get in each other's way. It will feel and it will be true that the rules of the proverbial road to which we have agreed will get in our way. And still, part of our trust in one another is that we won't make excuses for breaking those rules. It is not enough to say that we will not engage in terrorist acts unless they are on behalf 
of a righteous cause in pursuit of justice or in defiance of oppression, for there is nothing that will justify murder and rape and brutality. It is not enough to say that we will not engage in genocidal acts unless we are responding to terrorist acts in pursuit of security or in hopes of stamping out resistance. For there is nothing that will justify the indiscriminate violence inflicted upon a people. It is not enough to say that we will not engage in acts of torture unless they are in pursuit of security or in defiance of great evil or when we choose to call it enhanced interrogation methods, for there is nothing which will justify such calculated cruelty. It is not enough to say that we will not engage in environmental assaults unless the payoff is particularly impressive, or the ramifications seem distant, or there is vague promise of a technological solution for whatever problems we cause for there is nothing which will justify the further degradation of our planet, jeopardizing life in all its forms. We can agree to stop the pattern of inflicting all that we would choose not to suffer. Because we do understand that all of us need all of us to abide by the rules of the intersection. Our country, my country, has a credibility problem because we promote the rules of the road for everyone else, but freely violate them ourselves, all for very good reasons, of course. This inevitably corrupts a system that is based on trust. When I approach the intersection, I have to trust that everyone is committed to the same rules has entered into a promise about how we will behave at the intersections of international relations, has accepted that all of us need all of us in order to move with some assurance through whatever lies ahead. And the arms industry and all who profit from it in my already tortured metaphor does not mind at all when trust is broken does not mourn the accidents at the intersection, but rather celebrates them, applauds the lame excuses that countries and leaders give for breaking the rules of the road, because with every accident, there are more vehicles to sell. With every conflict that erupts, there are more weapons to sell to both sides, to every side, more fears to exploit, more mistrust to ignite. What if we could bring the deep awareness of intersectional interdependence into every action, realizing that we quite literally hold one another's life in our hands, striving to be trustworthy as we hold the other person worthy of trust, staying aware of everyone around us, especially those who are most vulnerable. Power, writes Rebecca Solnit, creates a cushion of obliviousness around us. One can't afford to be oblivious at an intersection. It puts everyone at risk. She goes on to write, the unexamined life is not worth living, as the aphorism goes, but perhaps an honorable and informed life requires examining others' lives, not just one's own. Perhaps we do not know ourselves unless we know others. And perhaps we can't seek justice for ourselves unless we know others will be treated justly. And perhaps we can't experience any measure of security unless we know others experience that measure of security in their lives. And perhaps we realize that acting safely means ensuring the safety as best we can of everyone at the intersection. Perhaps we do not know ourselves unless we know others. Perhaps we cannot live our lives without trusting and relying on others. Perhaps we cannot be present to ourselves 
unless we fully embrace being there for others. And if we do, we know that nobody is nobody and that all of us need all of us. See you at the intersection. So may it be.